In today's lesson, we're going to take a look at some applications of trigonometry. Suppose we have a building. We have a little old lady down on the ground, and she's looking at the bottom of the building. She decides to look upward toward the top. The angle that's been formed by her looking up is called the angle of elevation. You can remember that because when you look up, it's called elevation, and if you want to go up, you'll take an elevator. Now suppose the little old lady gets inside the building, she takes the elevator to the top, and now she's standing up on the top of the building. She's looking straight ahead into the horizon. She decides to look down to the ground. The angle that's formed when she looks down is called the angle of depression. You can remember that because if you have depression, you'll feel down. So what does this really mean? Well, first of all, here's an interesting fact. The angle of depression is always the same as the angle of elevation. So if the angle of depression is 45 degrees, the angle of elevation is also 45 degrees. This is actually very handy, and you'll see how this is as we look through some examples. In example one, we have a tree. John wants to know how high the tree is, but he doesn't really feel like climbing up to the top and measuring down. He decides to use trigonometry. Whenever we use trigonometry, we're talking about triangles, and so we'll draw a triangle next to the tree. He walks 100 feet from the bottom of the tree, and so we'll begin by labeling our triangle 100 on the bottom. That's the side that's on the ground. Then he looks up. The angle of elevation is 33 degrees, and so we'll label that in our triangle also. Now the question says, how tall is the tree? That's what I want to find out, and so I'll call the side along the tree x. Notice that I have here the opposite and the adjacent. Which of our three trig ratios uses the opposite and the adjacent? Well, that's the tangent. So the tangent of 33 degrees equals opposite x over adjacent 100. <clears throat> now I can cross multiply and plug that into my calculator and I get x equals 65. The tree must be 65 feet tall. In example 3, we have a building that's 50 feet high. We have an observer, and he knows that the angle of elevation, looking up from the ground to the top of the building, is 41 degrees. The question is, how far away from the base of the building is the observer? Well, we're going to use trigonometry, and so we'll draw a triangle right alongside the building. Now, let's fill in the information that we have. The building is 50 feet high. The angle of elevation is 41 degrees. And the observer wants to know how far we are from the base of the building. Now that we've filled in our triangle, we can use trigonometry to find the length of that side. Please pause the video here, find the length of the side marked x, and then come on back and we'll see how you did. We began by looking at the sides that we have. We had our opposite and our adjacent. Opposite and adjacent is the tangent ratio, and so we have the tangent of 41 degrees equals 50 over x. Now we cross multiply and solve for x. x equals 58, which means the observer must be 58 feet from the base of the building. Next, let's take a look at example four. We have an airplane that's flying at a height of two miles above the ground. And we know that if we go down to the ground, it's about five miles from the airplane to the airport. We want to know what the angle of depression is from the airplane to the airport. For example, what angle does the pilot need to put the plane down so that it can land at the airport? We draw a triangle and we label what we have. The airplane is two miles above the ground. The distance from the airport to the airplane along the ground is 5 miles. We want to know the angle of depression, the angle that the pilot's looking down to see the airport. Remember, the angle of depression has the same measure as the angle of elevation. That actually makes sense because if the pilot is looking down at the airport and the person at the airport is looking up at the airplane, they must be looking at the same angle. Now we can use our trigonometry. 
we have our opposite and our adjacent once again. So the tangent of angle x is 2 over 5. Now we find the angle with the inverse and we find out that the angle of elevation is 21.8 degrees, which means the angle of depression is also 21.8 degrees. Our final example, example 7, is for you to try. We have a 40-foot ladder and it's leaning against a 12-foot tall building. They want to know the angle of elevation that the ladder makes with the ground. Please label the triangle with the sides and the missing angle and then come back and we'll take a look at your work. We began by drawing a triangle. The latter is the hypotenuse and the left hand side of the triangle is the building. We know that the building is 12 feet tall, the latter is 40, and the angle of elevation is x. That's what we want to find. Now let's find the measure of the angle. Please pause the video here find the measure of angle x and then come on back. Let's see how you did. We have the opposite and the hypotenuse. Opposite and hypotenuse is our sine ratio. So the sine of angle x is 12 over 40. We use the inverse to find the measure of the angle. We get that the angle is approximately 17 degrees. Now to follow up with this, the ladder manufacturer has issued a statement in the owner's manual. That statement says, for safety, a rigid ladder should be leaned at an angle of about 15 degrees to the vertical. At steeper angles, the ladder is at risk of toppling backwards when the climber leans away from it. At shallower angles, the ladder may lose its grip on the ground and fall. Is our ladder in compliance? Well, it says that we should have an angle of no more than 15 degrees. Our angle happens to be 17 degrees, which is a problem. And therefore, we're not in compliance. We run the risk of toppling over. So here's everything you need to know about applications of trigonometry. When you have it, draw a picture. Draw a picture of the tree, draw a picture of the building, draw a picture of the lamp post, or whatever you are working with. Draw your triangle next to it, label the sides, and then use your trig ratios to find the piece of information you want. That's everything you need to know about working with basic applications of trigonometry.